I'd like to ask some of Bobby's high school friends, Jay Granado, Peter Melcrete, and Sarah Blackburn to come up and say some words. Good morning, everyone. Jay, Sarah, and I have known Bobby for most of his life. So it's likely the three of us standing up here with the microphone would make him a little nervous. We've known him through difficult adjustments, awkward phases, and the other tribulations of our middle school and high school years into adulthood, where we have had the pleasure watching Bobby grow up to incredible professional and an even better person. We are privileged to share a bit about why we love Bobby so deeply and how much he means to us. Having gone through so many milestones together, it's impossible to imagine the emptiness we will feel, feel celebrating life's joys or enduring the hardships without him. It feels unfair to have lost him when and how we did. But we are trying to find comfort in knowing that he died doing what he loved, a job he took so much pride in doing, and that we are joined by so many to mourn him. As a humble person who never sought the spotlight, he is likely equal parts overwhelmed and honored by the number of people who have gathered over the last few days to celebrate his life. Bobby contained multitudes. He was smart and practical and always happy to point out a more efficient way of doing things. He was also a dreamer. He believed so much in this city its potential, and its ability to make it a better, safer place. He was goofy and sarcastic and knew how to tease you until you're about to reach your breaking point. But he was also, but he was also knew how to so uplift you, support you through your most difficult moments and remind you how much he loved you with his words, but more importantly, with his actions. It was as if he felt a day was wasted if he hadn't made someone else's with his jokes or thoughtful gestures. He was a private person, saving most of his most existential thoughts and hopes for those closest to him. But he was also affable that people who had only met him once or twice thought of him as a true friend, and rightfully so. People were drawn to him. They always have been. Bobby liked just about everybody. If he didn't like you, you'd never know. He was unfailingly loyal to his friends and to his family, he was equally kind and gracious with strangers. You wanted to get to know him, and he wanted to get to know you. Bobby was so many wonderful things, and we were grateful to have gotten to know many sides of him, to see him excel in many different ways throughout his life, and to have called him our best friend and brother. Now, people who knew Bobby... He also displayed a truly superhuman snacking ability. It takes a lot to shock me, but I remember going to his house numerous times, him laying on his couch, rubbing his stomach quietly. I'd go into his kitchen, there'd be an empty mixing bowl with some batter and a big empty package of Oreos and his fryer out on the counter. I'd say, Bobby, did you fry the entire thing of Oreos and eat them at once? And he would be more than excited to say, yes, yes, I did, and say it proudly. And I'd be, buddy, that's like 12,000 calories. He didn't care. But you'd be talking 20 minutes later, he'd be asking, do you want to go get black bamboo? Do you want to go get a cheeseburger? Do you want to do something? I didn't understand how that boy could keep eating. But I guess you could say the only thing 
possibly could be bigger than his heart was his stomach. I had known for a while that Bobby had the mind of a detective. And there's a story here where I realized it. He was incredibly observant and extremely intelligent. We would go over to his house and he would uh, pick a movie one night and I'd pick a movie the next time it was my turn. And I picked The Usual Suspects, which I'm sure many of you know. Um, I was so excited for him to be wowed by the twist. I certainly was. Um, if you've seen the movie, you know. Um, five minutes into the movie, he told me exactly how it ended. Uh, like I said, mind of a detective. I always, I always asked him, I said, I said how, how did you know? And he gave, <laughs> he gave that goddamn smile. He <laughs> said, you'll never know. Um, so what we ended up doing was for the 20th or 30th time watching his favorite movie, which was uh, Grandma's Boy. Um, not quite as critically acclaimed as usual suspects, but it was okay. I was just happy to be spending time with him. Made, made anything fun. Anything. Bobby wanted nothing more than to be a Hartford PD detective, a hero and a leader in his community. We can only hope that he knew just how heroic he was in all of the big and obvious ways, displaying his courage, discipline, and compassion during every shift, but in the more subtle ways as well. He was patient, warm, he was there to help you if you needed it. And he was not only optimistic about his own future, but yours too. He was the kind of person that everyone wanted to be around and that's heroic in itself. We often glamorize people when they pass, but Bobby was truly good. And he did it with an enviable amount of humor and ease. He wasn't perfect. He was fallible like the rest of us, but he was on an unending quest to be better for himself and to make a difference in a world that pushed back on those instincts all of the time. There are so many things for which Bobby will be remembered, but above all, he would want us to honor him by emulating the love that he had for this city, for his family, for his friends. He would want us to strive to make the world better in small ways every single day by offering a smile or extending a hand to someone. I can definitely speak for the three of us and the many friends that he had that are not standing up here with us today when I say that we hope to carry on that legacy and to make him as proud as he made us. Bobby, we will always love you and cherish the time that we spent laughing and learning and growing with you. Rest well and know that you will never be forgotten. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs>